Hey guys, welcome back to the new shop. Um, today is going to be a video, the, the first video in a video series on another South Bend restoration. This year, you're probably wondering who this guy is. This is my friend Tim. Hey. Uh, Tim Marks. He, uh, he and I met on Practical Machinist. Yep. Uh, he too restored a South Bend lathe and lo and behold he kind of lives in my backyard so uh, we got we got together we hung out we saw each other shop and how cool is that to have somebody who, who can come over and hang out and talk shop with you so one of the things about Tim is Tim does restorations too obviously he did the lathe and he does old vintage fans right antique fans uh, 19th century early 20th century if you think my work is good you're in for a treat when you see his stuff. So your your website is whitegloveFans.com. WhitegloveFans.com. Um, one of Tim's strengths is painting. I mean, he he's a fantastic painter. I don't know why he's why he has a day job when he could become a famous painter. Um, but he, you know, he's going to teach me how to paint better. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And he's going to join me on the mechanical side of the restoration. So. Again, this is going to be the first in a you know a multi-part series. It's going to be a full restoration of a South Bend 10K lathe. And uh, just to pick up on the other ones, you know that I have a, a South Bend shaper restoration kind of in flight as well as a pedestal grinder. Uh, we're going to be working on those two together. And now that the shop is all done and we're in the new place, um, you know all that stuff could commence again. So, what do you say? I look forward to it. I think it's going to be fun. We're going to uh, both learn a lot from each other, I hope. That's what I like to do. That's why I like doing this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, let's see. What are we going to do here first? So, tonight's video is going, to be, is going to be the first one. So, what we're going to do is we're going to break down the major assemblies and, and remove them off the machine. And then each video will be sort of like a, um, I guess I'm figuring maybe... Each assembly will be dis disassembled. Um, I'm not going to have a lot of not going to have a lot of footage on stripping paint and all this stuff. We'll show the techniques, um, but it's not going to be you know uh, minute after minute after minute no. of, of footage. I think so. yeah. I think what would make a lot of sense is the process of painting going from uh, <clears throat> greasy. Uh, 50 year old paint to bare metal and yep. then back up to brand new urethane paint is a long drawn out process with lots of steps. I think what makes a lot of sense is just we, we talk a lot about it, we show and we'll, we'll cut to the good parts that you know matter most to the viewing audience and, um, and then I think also let's pull apart the different sub-assemblies and show how actually to take apart a South Bend's carriage, put it back together. Right? Absolutely, that's that's one of the key things that I I neglect neglected to do with a lot of my other restorations. A lot of my other stuff is really pictorials. It's uh, slideshows of the before and after. This will be a a step by step how to disassemble it. these parts here. These parts go there. We'll we'll take you through buffing and shining up and degreasing and cleaning. We, we, you know we got a new uh, ultrasonic cleaner that I'm I'm itching to try out to see if it if it uh, you know if it's better than the conventional methods. So um, I think we're going to talk about electrolysis too. Yes, at yes. Some point. Electrolysis. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, automotive primers. Um, whether or not you know that is worth the extra cost and extra hassle mm -hmm. to the people. Um, body filler, grinding your castings before. You know, I think you'll decide ultimately how far you want to go into your paint job, but it'll definitely make sense for both of us to talk about how far you could go and why you might want to do that or why you might not want to do that, depending on what you want out of your restoration. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and that's actually a good point because for the 10K, that that's one of the machines that I don't want to go too crazy with with body filler. I yeah. want it to have that old look. Yeah, um, not like my machines. Right. I mean, his machines look like they were carved from glass. I mean, so beautiful. Um, but well, it takes gonna, a year to do. It yeah, isn't really you know. We we're, we're going to do that on the pedestal grinder because the pedestal grinder is it's a showpiece. It's a showpiece. It has a lot of a squared off geometric kind of pieces that would really benefit from that kind of a treatment. And then the shaper, I think, you know, the shaper will have a lot of that as well. So um, 
yeah, enough yapping. Let's uh, let's get started taking apart the 10K. All right. So the first sub assembly we're going to move, remove, will be the tailstock, which is accomplished by doing this. Did you get that? All right. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take off our carriage. Now. To do that, we need to first remove the lead screw uh, bearing right here. So we're going to just clean out any kind of dirt and chips right there. Oh, these are lucky, these come right out. Uh, while you do that, I might as well pull the uh, saddle gib off of the back of the saddle. Yep, what's, what Tim's removing is a saddle gib, and the purpose of that is it doesn't, it, it allows, the, it prevents the saddle from tipping forward. Now this guy should just this should just slide off. If you ever notice if it gets if it gets hung up, most of the time it's it's paint. But all these lead screws they're all they're all bare. There's really nothing holding it. It literally is just a a, a hanging bearing. All right, so we got the screws there. All right, Tim, let me see that. Let's show them what that how dirty how your uh, side oh, did. Yeah, a lot of chips get stuck in there. A lot of uh, a lot of dirt. Yuck. <laughs> All right, now one thing I know about these, these aprons is that they hit this foot over here. Yeah. Don't ask how I know that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna remove these two screws here and it's gonna allow this, uh, the, the apron to come down and disconnect. From the saddle entirely. Right, from the saddle, yeah. So that one is out. This one's out. If you lift that away, there we go. Up, up, and away. Now, we're going to walk this right down. We're going to just slide it down. See, it hit the, it hit the leg. Okay. There's our cute little apron. Right? Much easier to handle than the 13-inch. Isn't it funny how there's a piece of sheet metal there instead of a oh, yeah. proper sump cover? Yeah, it's bigger. It's cast iron on the bigger models, and it's sheet metal on this one. I was reading your mind on that. So this this uh, side gear cover is damaged. In the fact, where this this uh, stud is kind of you uh, are you thinking you'll um, silver solder that or I don't know about that. I think what I'm probably going to do oh, is... I bet you can pin it pretty easily. Yeah, I, I might make a new, a new uh, piece for here, you know, cut the relief in it, bore this out, and then, you know, press it in, and then put a set screw or something yep. in there. I'm going to try to repair it first, you know, to keep it original rather than buying a new piece. That makes sense. <clears throat> All right, next up, you know what? While I'm here, I'm going to grab the, the holder for that. It actually looks like someone else already tried to repair that. Oh yeah, I find that on all these machines. Everybody else's handiwork. A lot of times it's good. It's good handiwork. This would be the uh, the side cover hinge, mounting it's, hinge. Yeah. So we got that. Now we're going to take off the the side gears here. You can do that. Yeah. It's a greasy job. It's a greasy job. Uh, yeah, if you want to engage the back ears, don't ever do this at home, guys. Oh, no, that's not going to cut it. Oh, that's because of this. There we go. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> that was not staged either. I promise you. If you, you're not supposed to lock the spindle like that with the back ears, but I think we all do it all the time. I think. You, you saw how I did that too. Yeah. Very gently. Just. If it's not coming off like that, then I'll go to a different method. Yeah, don't get your hammer out and start banging on it because that's how you'll break a tooth right off of the back gear. All right, so this is the idler gear. Okay. Put that right here. Idler gear bolt. I guess I should remove the chuck while you're doing that. Yeah, that's one thing I did, I pre-did. Uh, when I first got the machine, I took the chuck off to kind of see. 
and look at that. <laughs> I took all the gears off and I... <laughs> oh. um, well, yeah, that has to come off. Well, you know what? This is part of the gearbox, so... If you oh, remove no, no, no. the... Um, yeah, I gotta get this off to get to that, too. So... Well, but... You, you could remove the whole assembly and then hammer... Can't you hammer this through the gear? Oh, no, you know what, Tim? Uh, this is a job for a strap wrench. Alright. Ha! Did it come? Wow. Sure did. Um, I like strap wrench. Not the rubber kind, though. I've broken every rubber strap wrench I've ever owned. Yeah. You know, you need some. I have. I have this one that has rubber, kind of like got rubber impregnated in it or, or coated with it. That's cool. And then I will clean this afterwards with some with some stuff. Um, now this guy is a pressed on gear. Yeah, and while you do that, I'm gonna look for the uh, Allen that will open that guy because we're gonna have to remove the banjo eventually. Let's get the cover off first. I'm trying not to block the camera. I might be blocking the camera, and if I am, I do apologize. There we go. Good God, this thing is filthy. Wow. All right, so this is the kind of the banjo cover. Uh, it's a guard, and it is bent. So we're going to have to give this a little bit of TLC. Is that past time? It is cast aluminum, I believe. Yeah. There you go. Well, your machine is actually fairly easy to work on. So far, so good. <clears throat> now, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try... Well, first off, I'm going to... Try to clean this a little bit better. <laughs> clean it. Believe it or not, I... it's coming. Yeah. It's absolutely coming. You just need to get that gear off first. It's moving the gear, though. It is. Excellent. Um, this is not the best way to do it, but because it's kind of coming along, I'm just prying forward. Yeah, look at that. Ah, oh, beautiful. It's not a very tight press, press fit. Here, it's here, a very here. light. Oh, hold on. Oh, I can't get it loose yet, darn it. They're perfect. Gear off. Filthy, dirty banjo. Look at that thing. Yikes. Uh, okay, now what I'm gonna do is this, Tim. I will return this right here. Best way not to lose it is put it back where it goes. Yep. That's, that's good. Yeah. It's nice and tight coming out. This is our reversing tumbler. Um, I look at all the wear on this machine, and honestly, the twin gears on here... Not bad. Not, as, not in line with all the rest of the wear. There, you know, there's, there's some wear on there, but it's not all that bad. No, it's not that bad. Those are readily available, too. Yeah, and what we... <laughs> we don't buy what we could make. That's true as well. Who said that? Um, oh, if you ever watch, I think his name is Alton Brown, the, the, the Food Network, he does all the science, the okay. breakdown of food, <laughs> and he always says that we don't buy what we could make. I always thought that was funny. Anyway, time to get the headstock off here, because we cannot get to the gear without the headstock being... You want me to take these uh, reservoirs off, because they're totally loose anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. I'll tell you what, 
this uh, 10K compared to it. The 10L is not a big machine. The Heavy 10 is not a huge machine in the world at least. It's a pretty small machine, but working on this little 10K compared to the 10L that I did, yeah. it's, uh, it's a lot smaller. Teenier. Yeah. The head thing the, is mini. The tail stock is cute on it. It's very cute. You can hold all the castings with one hand. Yeah. Good luck doing that on a on a heavy ten or anything bigger. Ah, gosh, I can't even imagine the thirteen. That'll spend a pain in the butt. Oh yeah, that, that took a lot of work. Um, I will say this though. So this machine is really for. This is going to be my second operation machine. Um, not only second operation, but it's going to be. It, it keeps me in the South Bend Lathe Club. Yeah. I cannot, you know, after all I've been with, been through with South Bend Lathes, um, I can't be without one. I love them. I, you know what, too? There's some jobs that are just more fun doing in college with a smaller machine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, uh, that little pin you have that you're working on the, with a 448 thread would be a great part for a machine like this. Exactly. I mean, there's there's been so many times when I needed a, to do a second operation. Now that I'm making parts for for an actual company, I was like, man, if I only had a second. Did you get reach that one in there? there? Yeah. We're gonna get them dirty after all. I know. I think I can. All right. Yeah. Luckily, nothing has been giving us any problems in terms of you know being sticky or non-cooperative. Everything's just come right out. One thing I will mention while Tim is doing that, you see these right here? These are Viewmasters from the South Bend Lathe Company. And they have all product information on lathes and accessories and shapers and drill presses. And we were looking at them through the actual Viewmaster. And right, Tim? Uh, how cool is that, right? 3D photos of, of South Bend's products. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make that a part. I think of this restoration yeah. video, full color, three D, three uh, D. It's all the images that you've seen in the South Bend catalogs, um, but in color in three D. It's really incredible. Cool. Yeah, it's really really cool. All right, so I did the I did the deed of removing the belt. So uh, you want to do the honors? We're good. Yeah. Just where would you like it? Let me make room on the bench. These are caked. Yeah. One thing I wish I would have done. Sharpen my... dart. Remove the uh, remove the fletching. Oh, have nice. like a little screw. It's just such a handy. Scribe. Digger outer. Yeah. Chip digger outer. Uh, oh my god, and just when you think you got it all, it's just so packed in there. Yeah. Right? You look, you're oh, it, it all came out. No, think again. It, it's just, my god. The screws are so deep, you know? The slots. So Tim was inspecting the scraping on the underside of the of the uh, headstock, and yeah, I mean, it's it looks, looks like... Sharp. So we're just digging this out, and really, so we could get a screw in there, a sc screwdriver. Now I'm letting you do it. I'm not buffering up your screws. Yeah, I'll get the impact for this. Okay. Make quick work of it. Do you use this ball peen on it? Yeah. Uh, loosen, okay, here we go. So, actually, I'm going to use it. This is this is one of the rare cases where you got to use a bigger hammer. You can always use a bigger hammer with one of these. But the uh, I'm using the solid brass lump hammer for this. So the impact converts the hammer force into a quick. Yep. Loosen. That's a perfect hammer. Did you make that one? Uh, no, that was actually my dad gave me that. That's cool. Look at that. No booger. All right, you want to hold on to that? One. Uh, I can 
I should be able to pull the lead screw out now, right? Or soon? No, no, that's, that's uh... From behind? Yeah, they got that pinned in with something. Okay. I forget exactly what, it's been a while. All right, she could drop now. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, it's just right here with two, okay. You know what? You're right, though, on that, and I have... I have a tool for that. That's good. All right, now we're going to take this off. All right, you got it? There we go. Your lead screw does show a little wear in the middle, but not, you know what I mean, nothing. Are you able to hold that? Ah, oh. Uh, what's a good, oh, strap wrench? Yes. I'm not really ashamed to say what I did, but we got uh, we got these with some paper towels, and I, I literally I just you know I I I, I kind of caught the keyway a little bit and, and just held it you know the keyway provided a little bit of a flat, um, and I just held it. I didn't really bite down hard. Thankfully, it really wasn't very tight. It just kind of came right off. Um, it, it broke free really easy. So again, not not the best method, but. It is what it is, we got it off. So we'll just, uh... there you go. All right. That one is pressed in, which not a problem because we'll use a a brass drift. So what we're going to do now is we're, this 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 uh, gear right here is pressed on. It's a light press. It isn't very hard. Um, I'm going to kind of go in with this brass drift here and just tap on it a little bit. Just to persuade it. All right. Key. Right there. You don't want to lose that key. Yes. So there's our lead screw, one of the nuts. <coughs> South Bend gearbox, pretty standard. I believe this is the same one they use on, on all the, well, on the 9A. I was going to say all the 9-inch models, but 9A is the only one with a gearbox. With a gear, yeah. So nice. here you go. Looks to be in pretty good shape, yeah. though. It seems like it. Right? I don't see anything. It's in better shape than the gearbox on my head 10 terrible shape. I'm looking, I don't see, just giving it a quick inspection, I don't really see any kind of boogered up gears or broken teeth. Awesome. All right, let's uh, look at this. Uh, <laughs> greasy, <laughs> filthy. Yeah. Um, I think honestly at this point we, we, we probably should stop because okay. I'll leave this right here in place where it is because it's a perfect place for it mm -hmm. until until I'm ready to, to clean this. Um, That's a good point because we'll keep it like this because we could sit and we could scrape this and get it all prepped and ready. This this might be one of the only pieces. Tim and I were talking about this. You know, we kind of had like a little bit of a a sync up meeting on this a few days ago, and. Um, you know, where we're going to use electrolysis to do a lot of the rust and, and paint removal. This one, this bed itself, because it's so big, instead of building a box yeah. big enough and going through the thing, it, I, could, I could get this stripped of, of all the paint in, in a night, you know, and just make it, you know, quick and easy. Electrolysis is easy, but it does take a few days to actually work. Yeah. So electrolysis is nicest when you can hang a bunch of parts in the bath yep. and just do them all at once with a part a big part like this you're not going to fit anything else in with this part and uh if you're in a rush you might as well just get scrubbing yeah. oh you know what's actually a good place to uh to to go with stuff like this uh throw it in the back of your truck and take it to a drive-in car wash and hit it with a pressure washer yeah yeah i've done that plenty of times so don't tell anyone <laughs> hey, that's what they're there for. Hey, they didn't take me out. But my God, look at this. I mean, 
please. Don't forget. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't use this as a scraper, but I'm just kind of <laughs> just scraping through. Let me let me get a, a close-up shot for you and show you what it looks like. Again, I'm just I'm just kind of going through to show you the uh, the dirt and the grime. All oh, these gotta go. So always make sure you go through and you clean up everything and make sure you have all your hardware, your nuts, your bolts, everything, because you don't want to lose anything. All right, guys, well, I think that's going to be it for part one of this South Bend restoration. Um, yeah, the, the, the next video will probably be, um, you know, disassembling, you know, we're, obviously we're going to be disassembling the sub-assemblies that we removed here tonight. Um, I don't know, you know, we'll probably either start on the, uh, the carriage or the, you know, the headstock. I'm kind of curious to see what the headstock looks like, the spindle. It'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting to see the condition of the spindle. That'll say a lot about the machine in general. But yeah. the gears, the gears look good. The ways are worn out. I mean, that's pretty normal. But hopefully the spindle's good. Thanks very much for having me, Brad. I appreciate you hanging out. Oh, anytime. All right, guys, that's it. So my elbow says thanks for watching. See ya.